Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Okay So I'm reading from Preaching is the Essence um, So I'm guessing this is where we're at Is it Is it that's the Vaishnava shows compassion towards sinful yeah. suffering. And then, yeah. so the next one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> A bona fide devotee is ag- aggrieved to see the fallen condition of the world. A bona fide devotee of Lord Krishna is always pained to see the fallen condition of the whole world. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say, "There is no." Uh, Probably read this in the morning, right? Next one. A devotee is not satisfied with his own salvation. Out of compassion, he preaches to others, and Krishna gives him special special protection. A Krishna conscious person should free himself from the clutches of Maya, and he should also be compassionate to all others suffering in those clutches. The activities of Krishna consciousness movement are meant not only for oneself but for others also. This is perfection of Krishna consciousness. One who is interested in his own salvation is not as advanced in Krishna consci- consciousness as one who feels compassion for others, and who therefore pro- propagates this Krishna consciousness movement. Such an advanced devotee will never fall down from, for Krishna, will give him special protection. That is the sum and substance of the Krishna consciousness movement. And this is Bhagavatam 6.2.36-37. Right. A devotee is not satisfied with his own salvation out of compassion. He preaches to others and Krishna gives him special protection. Right. So, you know, us going out every day and trying to spread this movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is trying to help the, you know, live the conditions, ever conditioned souls. You know, and at the same time, helping ourselves by doing the highest thing possible. You know, Krishna gives special protection. So when we give our whole life to Krishna uh, on the battlefield out there in the material world, then Krishna is able to give us all protection. So we, uh, we also as conditioned souls, we don't have to worry so much. So we simply just go out there without any material motivation and we perform our service to the best of, of, of our ability to spread the Krishna consciousness movement. And following, following what Srila Prabhupada is teaching, following what all our acharyas are teaching, not that we, we decide to follow our own things and concoct our own ideas of what the philosophy, sh- philosophy should be and what we should teach. Mm-hmm. You know, this, we've, been given the, we've been given the instructions on how we can spread this Krishna con- consciousness movement through the Sankirtan movement, book distribution and Hainam. These are the only two things, you know, that's what they were doing when Prabhupada started. Prabhupada started like that and, 
in a Tompkins Square Park. He started with a pair of cartels. You know, he didn't have to do anything crazy. He didn't have to, you know, do like you know, do yoga and turn upside down, do all these things. He just simply followed Mahaprabhu's instructions and his spiritual master Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's instructions. You know, and from that, look what came out. You know, we're sitting here in a huge building here, spreading, trying to spread the movement just as Prabhupada did, chanting Hare Krishna, you know, as much as we can. Six hours a day, seven days a week, now six days a week. But seven days a week for seven years, now we're trying to expand. So we, we take measures to expand this Krishna conscious movement. So the devotee, he doesn't care for his own interest. You know, even this, up to the point of salvation, you know, he has he has no desire to, you know, be anywhere but at the service of Krishna. Downstairs, I think. So love. So the pure devotee has no interest even to gain salvation. You know, the only thing he really desires is to perform service for the pleasure of Krishna. So the pure devotee's you know, main, main motivation is to please Krishna by performing service. And that, that special service that he's performing is helping others, helping others to come closer to Krishna. And when he's helping others himself, you know, and Krishna says in, I forget the text, how you know, the one who preaches this message to the devotees, he is most dear to me. You know, and what do you think he, Krishna is saying to, his, to, to the devotees, what to speak of the non-devotees? How merciful is the devotee to even preach to the non-devotees who are you know, almost like the atheists who are against Krishna? So what kind of mercy is that devotee who is preaching you know, to the ones who, to the fallen conditioned souls he's getting? So like that, you know, we're going on with our, with our Hainam and book distribution and you know, Prabhupada says how don't think that this uh, book distribution Harinam won't have any effect. It will because it's the prescribed process. You know, it's it's the prescribed method, it's the authorized method by which we can, you know, flood the whole world with um, Krishna. So we we simply take to this and don't worry about anything else. Don't worry th about anything else, like anything new. There is no new philosophy, there is no new you know, movement, there's no new idea, there is no new, it's just Sankirtan and book distribution. As Srila Prabhupada has given it, as Mahaprabhu has given it. And, and that, that's the only way we should go uh, in, our, in our Krishna consciousness and then we can actually advance. And then we can see how much you advance, you know. Like, it's, it really is tangible when you give your life to the Sankirtan movement, you know. It's like, I, you know, one example is like, to be in the association of devotees like this is like really like far out, you know. I, in Adelaide, you know, it's like you don't have this Sangha where, where we're from. We don't have this fire of Sankirtan. We don't have this fire of book distribution. So even giving a little bit in Adelaide, you know, whatever we can, you know, to have the mercy to come over here and be with such devotees, just by performing whatever little Srila Prabhupada has said, you know, whatever we're trying to do, little that we can do in Adelaide, you know, somehow we're getting the mercy through. Somehow cruises ended up here, I'm ended up here, Pavan's here, all these Australian guys are here, just by trying to do even a little bit, trying to serve a little bit. We're getting so much. Like the mercy that's coming through here is, you know, we come here and it's like, it's like a big flood of just Krishna consciousness. And we're here and we're forced to be Krishna conscious, you know. All day I wake up, excited to chant my rounds every day, mm. you know. I wake up excited to go out on Harinam. How am I going to go and perform Harinam today? Six hours a day. I wake up excited for that and, you know, having that opportunity to do that. And you can really see out of, when you're not in that, you can see where your consciousness is at. You can really see how degraded you get outside of Harinam and book distribution. So quickly, like, uh, when I went back, like, when, we were, when I was here last time, I went back, I think at the start of the year, I was only here for a month and a half. Yeah, and that was the first time I've ever done like intense harina, and it's like, it was really crazy, you know? And I never really felt the contrast because I haven't had, I got that experience and I would have had to have the other experience. 
So when I went back to Australia, the first day back, I had to go back to university. And as soon as I went back to university, hearing these people speak, you know, it's, it's, it's complete Maya, you know, they only speaking nonsense, you know, whatever they're speaking. So just hearing that, you can feel the heaviness outside of this, you know, talking Krishna consciousness, being with the devotees, constantly thinking about Krishna, talking about Krishna, chanting about Krishna, how heavy this energy is and how much it like degrades your consciousness. The first day I was like, got out of there and I didn't, I, like, I had to just, you know, it worked. luckily there was high enough straight away. But like, I just had to kind of recap myself, working, hang on, where am I, what am I doing? And you really like, you lose yourself a lot. You really lose yourself and you forget what the real kind of goal is. So like that, you know, just being in this fire is like so important for us. And ultimately to go back home, back to God, this is the only process, you know, chanting Hare Krishna and book distribution, serving the spiritual master. That is the sum and substance of the Krishna consciousness movement. So this is what, that's the last sentence on here. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasati Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudayet Shranavatam Sakata Kataha Krishnaha Punya Shravana Kirtana Hirdantaha Stohi Abhadrani Vidunnoti Shuto Satam Nasta Preshu Abhadrishu Nityam Bhagavad Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Vavanti Niyastaki so today, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 3, text 5. So, so this is Etan, Nana, Avataranam, Nidyanam, Bijam, Avyayam, Yasya, Amsa, Amsena, Shijante, Eva, Triak, Naradhya, Etanana Vartanam, Nidyanam Bijam Avyayam, Yashyam sam Yashyam sam sena shujante Devatriya naradaya Etanana vartanam Nidyanam bijam avyayam Yashyam sam Yashyam se Yasyam samsena shujyante Devatriya naradaya Etanana vartaranam Nidyanam vijam avyayam Yasyam samsena shujyante Devatriya naradaya Sena 
Word for word, etat, this form, nana, multifarious, avataranam, of the incarnations, nidyanam, source, vidyam, seed, avyam, indestructible, yasya, whose, amsa, Amsha. Plenary proportion. Plenary proportion. Portion. Amsena. Amsena. Part, of the plenary portion. Part of the plenary portion. Shajante. Shajante. Create. Create. Deva. Deva. Demigods. 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 Triak. Triak. Animals. 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 Adyaha. Adyaha. Human beings, Human beings and others. Translation by Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Translation. This form, the second manifestation of the Purusha, is the source and indestructible seed of multifarious incarnations within the universe. From the particles and portions of this form, different living entities like demigods, men and others are created. Please repeat. This form, this, this form, the second manifestation of the Purusha, is the source an indestructible seed of multifarious incarnation within the universe. From the particles and the portions of this form, different living entities like demigods, men and others are created. So this, uh, this purport is quite long so I was only going to speak on the first paragraph of this purport. Uh, so purport. The Purusha, after creating innumerable universe in the Mahatadva, entered in each of them as the second Purusha, Garbhadakshai Vishnu. When he saw that within the universe there was only darkness and space without a resting place, he filled half of the universe with water from his own perspiration and laid himself down on the same water. This water is called Garvadaka, Garbodaka. Then from his navel, the stem of the lotus flower sprouted on the flower petal, petals the birth of Brahma, or the master engineer of the universal plan. Or the master engineer of the universal plan took place. Brahma became the engineer of the universe and the Lord himself took charge of the manifestation of universe as Vishnu. Brahma was generated from Rajaguna Prakriti, the mode of passion in nature. And Vishnu became the Lord of the mode of goodness. goodness. Vishnu being transcendental, transcendental to all the modes is always aloof from materialistic affection. This has already been explained. From Brahma there is Rudra, Shiva who is in the charge of mode of ignorance or darkness. He destroys the whole creation by the will of the Lord. Therefore, all three, namely Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, are incarnation of the Garbha Daksha Vishnu. From Brahma, the other demigods like Daksha, Mirshi, Manu and many others become incarnated to generate living entities within the universe. This Garbha Daksha Vishnu is glorified in the Vedas, in the hymns of Garbha Shuti. Stuti which begins with the description of the Lord as having thousands of heads. The Garvadakshai Vishnu is the Lord of the universe 
And although he appears to be lying within the universe, he is always transcendental. This is also this ha also has already been explained. Vishnu, who is the plenary proportion, portion, plenary portion of the Garbha Dakshaya Vishnu, is the super soul of universal life, and he is known as the maintainer of the universe or Shir Dakshaya Vishnu. So the three features of origin, origin, original Purusha are thus understood, and all the incarnations within the universe are emanations from the Shir Dakshaya Vishnu. Om Mugyanati Pradasya Gyanu Gyanu Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupam Kadam Mayam Dadati Swapandandikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vashnavam Shah Shri Rupa Sahagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sadadvaitam Savadutam Parigyana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita, Sri Visakacha, He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Vandu Jagat Pate, Gopisha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namastute, Tapta Kanja Gaurangi Radha Vrindavani, Suri, Rashavan is two Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. Namo Mishnu Buddha, Krishna Prashtaya Buddha Le Shima Dibhakti Vedanta Swami Itiname Namaste Saraswati Devi Guru Pani Prasharine Nirvisesa Shunyavadi Pachitya Desutarine Okay, so translation, this form, the second manifestation of the Purusha is a source and indestructible seed of multifarious incarnations within the universe. From the particles and portions of this form, different living, different living entities like demigods, men, and others are created. All right. So, uh, I hope we get the blessings of all the Vaishnavas here to be able to talk on this subject matter, although I'm not very qualified to talk even on the Srimad Bhagavatam at all. I've tried my best as I could to do it justice, you know, some of this stuff, especially, you know, it's a lot described in the second canto and third canto very it can be very confusing especially reading it for the first time and but I've tried my best to put together some things that oh, luckily with the help of the devotees so let me try my best whatever <coughs> whatever I have okay so here is given the second <coughs> purusha of the uh, three purushas that are present so this one here is given Garva Dakshai Vishnu. So there are the three portions uh, <laughs> affecting the material creation. So we have Mahavishnu who is <clears throat> who is known as Karna Dakshai Vishnu who lies in the Karna Ocean. And then from that uh, uh, Garva Dakshai Vishnu comes and then from there we have Shur Dakshai Vishnu, as it was explained further on in the purport. So, with the material universe, we have within the spiritual universe, we have a little area, you know, and it's considered only one fourth, one, a quarter of what the spiritual universe holds, and is within that, and it's a little space where uh, Mahatadva is created. So, and this is uh, known as the material sky. And within the Mahatadva, all the material universes lie, and these universes are produced by Mahavishnu. So all the ingredients that are needed for the universe are contained within this Mahatadva. So Mahavishnu, or <coughs> Karnataka Vishnu, he lies down in that ocean, and when he, you know, exhales and when he inhales, these uh, universes become manifested or unmanifested yeah. and when these universes become manifested you know and they contain in the Mahatadva when he glances upon this Mahatadva upon this Mahatadva <coughs> the modes of this 16 uh, six, the 16 16 I think 16 elements 5 gross material elements and 11 working instruments and senses become active so the three modes of material natures become active, you know, the mind, intelligence, the ego, these become active. And these universes are create, created within this Mahatattva. And from there, 
Karnadakshai Vishnu, he expands himself into Garudakshai Vishnu. So he enters in within each one of these universes. And within each one of these universes, Garudakshai Vishnu, as explained here, you know, he sees darkness in space. Uh, and without a resting place, he, f he half filled, would half fill the universe of water from his own perspiration. So he lays down in this ocean, uh, which, is, which is of his own perspiration, and fr in that ocean, he, from his navel sprouts you know, a lotus flower, which is explained further on, uh, lotus flower. So I had a, a reference to this from the Brahma Samhita, which is, I believe, so uh, this is uh, to Mahavishnu, how it appears from the pores. So this is Brahma Samhita, text 48. Uh, so, let's see. I don't have the book on me, so. Text 48, Brahma Samhita, right? Sorry for the. Alright, so how this material universe is manifest is, is explained here is that Brahma and other lords of the mundane worlds appearing from the pores of hair of Mahavishnu re remain alive as long as the duration of one's exhalation of latter Mahavishnu. I adore, the, I adore the primeval Lord Govinda of whose subjective personality Mahavishnu is the portion of portion. Right, so from that lotus flower Brahma, Brahma is created. So Brahma appears on this lotus flower and he looks in all four directions. And this is within our universe. So uh, that's, when he looks in these four directions, there's, he's looking so he sees nothing. It's all darkness that he, he, his four heads appear. You know, this is the four directions. It's explained how, how Brahma only has four heads, but in other universes, uh, Brahma may have so many heads. You know, so Brahma looking, uh, sitting there looking nothing, he is very agitated. So, you know, he, <coughs> he wants to know what's going on. So, you know, he, he sees this lotus flower and the lotus stem and he starts to travel down this lotus stem. And he's traveling down this lotus stem and it's, and it's unlimited. And it's going down and down and down and down, but he's reaching nothing. So at one stage, he, you know, decides that this is enough, and he comes back up into the lotus flower. And he sits on the lotus flower, and he, he performs meditation. You know, he concentrates, uh, and uh, he hears the sound Om. That's the first sound he hears in the universe. And from that Om, he gains knowledge from within the heart. Which, so from, so from Garba Dakshai Vishnu, there's an expansion, third, third Purusha, which is... You know, Sri Dakshai Vishnu, who is super soul within the heart. So Brahma, being the first living entity, who is also who is a Jiva Tattva, who is the marginal, marginal potency of of the Lord, is his Jiva Tattva has uh, has um, Pramatma within his heart. And you know, him being the only living entity in the universe, he he gains knowledge gains knowledge through. <clears throat> within the heart from the Pramatma. So gaining this knowledge, he, he learns, he, he's able to understand what his duty is in the universe. Um, he's able to understand so that he has to create. And like it's explained here that, you know, from, from, uh, from the particle and proportion of this form, different living entities like demigods, men and others are created. So from Brahma, who is the first living entity, we have such demigods and <coughs> living entities. And if we go into the third canto, uh, let's see, is it described how he created the four Kumaras? <coughs> you know, at the first, the first living entities within the universe after Brahma were the four Kumaras. And these four Kumaras, I mean, Brahma's main business was to uh, make material manifestation. These four Kumaras didn't want to follow. They didn't want to be so materialistic. So they, 
I'll read the verse exactly so I'm not um, saying anything off. Let me one second. Index so three ten creation of universal form divisions of creation. So oh no. Right. Yeah, so, you know, him, the, the four Kumaras, you know, Brahma being the father of these four Kumaras, you know, he instructed them in a certain way. I can't ex exactly remember what that instruction was. I think it was to, you know, make material manifestation, make progeny, progeny, right? But these four Kumaras, they, they took to spiritual life more. So they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to follow what Brahma said. And him being angry, you know, uh, in the mode of <coughs> mode of ignorance, from from his from his eyebrows between his eyebrows came out Lord Shiva, who's 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 also one of you know one of his sons. So where and Lord Shiva being confused, he asked, "What my duty is within this material world?" And Brahma instructed him that you know he he his main duty will be destruction that. Who, at the end of the millennium, he destructs the whole material world. So, so from here, so we can understand that we have, uh, you know, Vishnu. So Vishnu in the mode of goodness, and Brahma in the mode of passion. Like it's stated here, you know, he is produced from the prakriti, and and Shiva, and the who is the in charge of mo mode of ignorance, who destroys. And from these person, and primarily Brahma. We have further on, if you read further on, you'll see how he created ten, 10 personalities. And I can't remember exactly the names of the personalities. And one of them was Narada Muni. Narada. So from these personalities, we had progeny and we have uh, material manifestation. And then we have, you know, our societies come through. So from there, this is happening where, we stated here, it's all like demigods, men and others are created. So these <coughs> so from there this is happening so what is the other point that I was gonna go on to what is that okay um, let's see created right so and it's stated here how I think further on or even here it's stated how you know one one breath of Vishnu is the lifetime of Brahma so Brahma lives, I think, 1.3 million times, 1,000 years is his one day in our time, and then that times by 100, that's his lifetime. So it's like 4.6 billion. something crazy like that. I didn't really do the calculation. Yeah, I think, I think there are names of four, one set of 14 man is covering, yeah, yeah 4.3 billion. 4.3 billion. Yeah, mm -hmm. so 4.3 billion years he lives. My gosh. So I think now it's stated in the Shastra how we're halfway through. Uh, Brahma is about 50 years old in his time. So at the end of this, at the end of his lifetime, the whole material manifestation is wound it, wound it up. And Shiva, Shiva is the main personality who, who is kind of in charge of this, where he destroys the whole material manifestation within the universe. And again, and again, the living entities, the jivas, are uh, merged back into the Mahatattva. So, you know, and this merging and, merging and ma manifestation and manifestation goes on eternally. Stated how this is, this is an eternal thing, I can't remember exactly where. I think I read this in Gita in one of the purpose prompts I talked about this. And how this, this, this is eternal time. How even in the material world, it's eternal time that it's going on, manifesting and unmanifesting. And this <coughs> manifestation and unmanifestation is due to the desire of the jivas. Um, <coughs> So, the desire of the jivas 
you know, and that we're nitta nitta buddhas, that they're eternally conditioned souls, and they're eternally conditioned souls because they they are envious of Krishna, you know. Uh, the nature of a jiva is to in, to to try to enjoy in the material world. Like we have senses, so we want to satisfy them for somehow, some somewhere, somewhere, you know, however we can. You know, we see in New York so many times. I mean, every day, practically, you know, like they all they're doing is trying to, you know, serve their own body, own senses, own mind. We met a lady yesterday in the train, and she was like, "Yeah, I've got the Bhagavad Gita," <laughs> and, and we're like, "Would you like, you know, something else, Shrimad Bhagavatam?" You know, she's like, "No, no, no, I'm good. You know, I think I understand everything." You know, and then and then Mahatma Prabhu, he said, "So you follow your own mind, right?" She's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Like, you know, like, your mind, your mind, where is your mind? Your mind is a rascal. Your mind wants to, you know, go against Krishna, go against what the Sastra is saying. You know, your mind is, is not the thing to follow. You know, Krishna says your mind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. You know, so, you know, being situated in Krishna consciousness, one must understand that his actual position is to serve, serve Krishna. His actual constitutional position is a servant of Krishna. So, so the jiva, you know, wanting to be Krishna, he falls down into, you know, the material world, and that from there, you know, he's ever conditioned just a cycle of birth and death. And uh, what happens when this, you know, material manifestation is becoming when it becomes unmanifest is that it's almost like a pause button. It's like whatever the jiva was going through, whatever karma he has that karma is remain, not that it gets wiped out and he starts again. This karma you know, stays with him and when the material world again, when Vishnu again starts to breathe out, when he breathes out again and it's manifested again, the jiva is put back into a particular type of body, a particular type of place, a particular type of universe according to his karma. And this is going on eternally until he decides to face Krishna. You know, eternally to face towards Krishna you know, describe the two birds sitting on the tree, one the super soul and one the jiva, and how the super soul is actually just waiting for the jiva to turn around. And you see that, you know, his actual position is to serve, not to, not to be, you know, not to be the purusha. But you know, so, so once that living, con the condition soul understands that he can get out of this manifestation, unmanifestation, and manifestation. Uh, within the material world and actually be situated in the spiritual world with you know the supreme personality of Godhead where he is actually happy where he actually can understand what his real position is what his real dharma is you know he's actually performing devotional service not that we're running around like you know chickens heads cut off not knowing what we're doing following whatever society is telling you you know having no direction at all where to go in life you know <laughs> Most of the um, most of our society, like especially you see, I'm currently in university, and you know I'll ask most of my friends. So what do you want to do? I don't know. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I don't know. You know they waste so much time of their life. It's so crazy. Like you know, like my friends now, some of them are they have free time. They have free. It's it's summer holidays, but they like they're so. I don't know what it is, they, they want to go and do some more of this full time, even within the holidays, oh you know, do God. research, do this, it's like, why do you want to do that? It's like, I don't know, maybe I'll get a job later because of this. But it's like, it's crazy, you know, like even in your free time, when you can actually try to understand yourself, you use it, you, you're forced to kind of use it, um, you know, in the service of, you know, in ser serving material nature, your own senses, you know, other senses, other people using you. So like that, you know, this jiva is really suffering in the material world. And when, you know, when you're in the material world, especially, you know, in association of such persons, it's very easy to, like, look past spiritual life, you know, because they're so, they have so much kind of pain throughout their day it's tough to take up spiritual life for them. You know, throughout the day you go to your work, you wake up early, you go to your work, you work all day on a computer maybe, you know, whatever you do, and then you come back home at six o'clock. You just spend almost 12 hours a day just at work. You're tired, 
you know, spiritual life is very hard at the start. You know, it's you gotta get regulated. You have rules and regulations to follow. You have to do certain things at a certain time. You know, and these things are very hard to follow at the start. So for people in material life, you can start to see how how tough it can be because it's like you're molded out throughout the day, and you come back and you know you read shastra, and shastra is telling you don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, so you can become happy. But it's very hard to do that because you want instant gratification because you've just had a horrible day. You know, there's no, you know, thinking about the long term so much. So like that, you know, it's like the, the living entities are ever conditioned until, you know, merciful devotees and distributing Srila Prabhupada's books and performing Hariram Sankirtan, somehow get a book in their hand to hear the holy name. And from there, then the jiva can start to understand what his eternal position is. You know, you know, and then from there he can become Nitya Siddha, eternally liberated. So like that, one becomes, one becomes you know, eternally liberated from this manifestation and unmanifestation of the material world, you know, this eternal samsara. So, you know, speaking on that, what's the time? It's 15 past. You know, I can, there's a few more things that I can talk about perhaps no and you know the process of creation here is given exactly as absolute you know the what we hear you know especially in our schools nowadays and you know the ideas that we have now theories you know uh, are very inconclusive and actually speculation you know i i am studying physics and some of the things i hear from these people is you know, how, like, how did the material creation come about? Well, the idea is that there was this big cloud just in the universe and some wave came through and agitated it. And then from there, like, you know, a bunch of gas clouds started interacting and they fell into themselves and gravitational pull, whatever. And it, 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 it was, the gravitational pull was so strong that it couldn't hold itself, so it exploded. And then from there, you know, by chance, everything started creating, all the universes became, all the planets became. But it's like, they say by chance, but what chance? You know, chance is something, okay, let's say if I have a coin, and I flip that coin, and I flip it once, I land on heads. I flip it twice, I land on tails. They say you do this a couple of times, you know, you get to a certain number, and then you can say by chance, 50%, 50%, that the, law, the coin will land on the heads or tails. But if you flip it once and it lands on one side, what's your explanation? You know, that, the, the, there is no explanation. They can't give an explanation. They just, it's just like, you know, they, what they do is they, they theorize one thing on a base, based on a bunch of assumptions, and then from there, they theorize other things that are also based on a bunch of other assumptions. So it's very, it's very you know, speculative knowledge. And, you know, if, you, if one way to, like, the knowledge doesn't make sense is that living, you know, life comes from life. Life comes from life. There's that book, Life Comes from Life. It's so like, life comes from life, you know. Without, without, you know, without Purusha Prakriti, there's no use, you know. It's like, you can't create without Purusha. So, so the living entity, or like, a Purusha must be there to create. That, you know, and we can't see examples of, you know, uh, just matter becoming manifested and creating something crazy. Like, you know, they're scientists now, they're creating chemicals and they're doing something. If out of matter, they may be creating some bacteria. But still, the living entity is creating, the, the living person is making that happen. Still, you know, and then it's a push is acting on that. So, you know, their, their knowledge is very speculative. And if, they, if you think about it, it's like, you know, matter doesn't just come about and create something, you know, you know, like this, you know, you have, a, you have a earth, you have all these other planets around, you have a sun, you have all this. It's, it's too perfect to have been by chance, you know. And there's no real, like, you know, if, if you prove a theory, you should be able to somehow see it as well. You should have some experience of it, you know. Like we can, but if you look, you know, it's like, what, how is it possible that something is created out of nothing? You know, that it's just... It's just out of like, just a chance somehow, you know, somewhere, somewhere, by small chance. Like, scientists say how if the, 
the neutron was off by like 10 to 1 point 1 times 10 to the negative 32 is 32 zeros and mm. one at the end if it was off by that one then the whole world, like whole universe is everything couldn't have been created like what nonsense you know it's like what are they speaking you know like you guys have no idea what you're kind of saying it's all speculative it's all just you know theories here and there and trying to create they're trying to be Krishna actually they're trying to say you know we, we know we know but like what do you actually know you know if we look if we look it's so it's exemplary that without the living entities or without the Purusha nothing can be created you can't throw trash out there and leave it out there maybe and then some buildings will appear like we said a couple of days a couple of I think like a week ago when probably get classes and if I like throw trash out not like a, 10 buildings are going to appear you know uh, Purusha needs to act upon the Prakriti or <coughs> in a Mata but for the creation so the theory of that matter is first is completely wrong and this should be established and this is really important actually this uh, knowledge of you know creation even though like uh, when I first read it it's like really hard to like take in you know it's like this Vishnu that Vishnu from there and then Mahatattva and then there's like the 24 elements and then it's like wow you know it's, it's a lot to take in but it's really important for one to understand this because it establishes the magnanimity of the Supreme Personality of Godhead you know nowadays we're getting fed so many things we have to understand that Shastra is conclusive and is absolute you know? yeah, and we have to make sure that especially our you know generations coming on like they're learning this not from they're learning you know manifestation from Shriman Bhagavatam not from these speculative scientists who don't actually know what they're talking about and they're misleading the society by this by because they, they because they can kind of you know they can predict what can happen with small things like if I throw a ball that it will curve and I can calculate exactly how long it will go how far it will go you know or, you know, I can exactly calculate certain things in the material world, how they function, you know, what the mechanism is behind them. So but just by, like, convincing people of these small things, they can, you know, kind of mislead them to, you know, think that there is nothing, there's no God, there's no, you know, conclude that, you know, everything is actually nothing, you know, your life, you know. Atheist philosophy is, philosophy is so stupid, because if there, if, you know, if there is no God, and if there's no, if there's no Krishna, and what's the point of life? You're born and you die. What's the actual point? You know, the whole, the whole idea of that they'll do research and find out about things is so useless. What's the point? You know, you're gonna die. If you think the world is matter, it's just matter and nothing else, and when you die, there is nothing, then what's the point of even doing what you're doing? Why are you doing the research? Why, are you doing the research? Why don't you just do anything that you like? Because you know? the jiva has that tendency, he, you know, super soul within the heart. And Jiva knows that he's such a Tananda, you know. And, and with this, like, even as a kid, you can't accept that there's nothing after death. It's like, it's such a weird concept, right? Like, after I die, there'll be not, like, how does that, even, there's nothing, it's still, like, if you think about nothing, it's, if nothing happens, it's still something happening. Is that it's nothing. But it, it makes no sense, you know, like, and you can feel that within your heart that this is not true. Uh, but unfortunately, people don't think about this so often. People don't think about death. Like we're like in the third canto, Kapila Dev talks about the uh, time, eternal time. I mean, time kala, as Krishna. Krishna is the you know time. I am the destroyer of all. How these men, they don't actually consider the. They don't. They don't see time. You know how it takes away from them until it's too late. They think, you know, that I'm eternal, like, I'm, young, I'm a, young, a pretty young guy, you know, 20 years old. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to live forever, it's okay. Mm. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be fine, I'll be alright. You know, but your illusion to think like that, you know, the scientists believe that they can, they can, they can make you, like, you know, they can make you eternal. You know, they can, they can give you some injections with some things and, you know, they can take care of you real nicely and you'll be fine. But it's all nonsense, you know. One can, you know, you have to take to the process of this Krishna consciousness movement and, you know, transcend the, transcendent, transcend the modes of material nature and be free from these things. And then you can have real eternity. 
real bliss, real knowledge. You know, the scientists can't give us real knowledge. Uh, we, the jiva wants real knowledge, real bliss, real you know, eternity. That's, that's our nature. Everyone is looking for that. But nobody else can give it apart from Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, our books. You know, and, they, and it's so detailed. It's so surprising. When every time I read Srimad Bhagavatam, I'm so surprised about the detail that they put into it. You know, especially reading about things like you know the the time, how the like intricacies of time, and how if you look back at science, even hundred years ago they started to kind of like start to come up with this. But Shastra is giving eternally. They've always given this, you know, and you know how how detailed this thing is, and how much in life it gives to you. Like when you read it, it's ecstatic. You know what science book do I read, and it's like ecstatic. And read it and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to get done with this. You read the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's transcendental. You know, it's ever increasing bliss. It's always something new, always something more to read. So, you know, one can get out of the material world and out of this samsara and like that by following Srimad Bhagavatam and, and be liberated and go back home, back to Godhead. Um, so I think I'll end there my whatever effort that I made. Um, thank you. Yeah, Any questions? Questions, critiques, jokes? <laughs> you know, it said that uh, Lord Brahma is the most pious devotee of the Yeah. So, how is it that he is still subject to uh, Maya? Right. Yeah. Right. So, so Krishna has his guys as posts. You know, he's like he's got his whole. He's like the head guy, and he's got all these managerial positions. He was reading the third canto, how Brahma is actually a self-realized soul. You know, he understands that you know he's a servant of Krishna, and that that you know he's constantly praying to Krishna for realizations, and he understands that mm, super soul is within the heart, and that. You know, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. You know, so he, but his his position is to create in the material universe. You know, so that is his that is his position right now. You know, so he's got to he's got to take that service, and as a service, he's performing that. So like that, you know, it's it's his service to perform to do that particular activity. Not that he he's a jiva, but that is his particular service. So he continues that service, even though he's a completely serious self-realized soul. So like that, I don't know if Vishnu Prabhu can add to that or explain that. Condition. Yeah. It's material desire, therefore it's condition. Mama is, the question is why is he influenced by the modes of material? Yeah. Because he's not a good, I mean, because he's not been completely purified. Right. Now, of course, our Brahma, this, Brahma who's currently occupying the post of the pure devotee. Mm. But even then, you know, there was of course times when he got bewildered. Mm. And uh, of course, um, Brahma, because he's, there's like very small desire to control the universe. So because of that, Brahma has to, I mean, that living entity has to be born as Brahma. He has so much piety, has so much pious credit that <coughs> he's born as Brahma. But he's this he's like this close to attaining like you know self realization, like complete mm -hmm. becoming a completely pure devotee, free from material desire. So ninety nine point nine 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 percent he's he's pure, absolutely so free, but then this point one he exhibits <coughs> like some material desire to enjoy. Hmm. And, because, and that desire is there that one is affected by the words of material nature. You stated in the Chaitanya Tirtamrita that Krishna Bhuliya Jeev Bhoga Man Chakari. The living entity forgets Krishna and wants to enjoy this universe. Wants to enjoy means do anything that he is according to, uh, is independent of Krishna's desire. Nikatasta Maya Tare Chapatiya Immediately Maya captures this person. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is a nice uh, 
झापटी होता है जो थ्रैश है झापटी तो झापटी है जो the sense in India you have different uh, okay. different levels of of, of strong so really? you know there's one two person who is beating you <coughs> my hand is one level of intensity I take a slipper and beat you at another level and I take a broomstick is next level you know? so jhapati so, other angle is that the highest okay. broomstick or slipper so it's like that it's jhapati yeah. yeah. so that's why Brahma is important. So if, if he didn't have any of these desires, if he was 100% pure devotee, would he still maintain that position as Lord Brahma? As, as the Depending on what the Lord's desire. Mm-hmm. If the devotee is in the material world, if the Lord just so desires, the devotee doesn't hesitate to go to hell, doesn't hesitate to go to heaven, doesn't hesitate, you know, the devotee personally is just, he acts according to the desire of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord wants that particular living entity. Yes, you go and be Brahma, you execute the service for me, and the devotee will do it. Mm. You just like Narada Muni, right? Yeah. So you're still traveling. Right. What is a pure devotee? Yeah. yeah. Right. This is a good example. Yes. Okay, thank you. You can add this also in this, further in the book where yeah. the highest pious being, it's the greatest Brahma. devotee of the Lord, is empowered with the potency of the Lord for creation, and he's called Brahma. His power is like the power of the sun reflected in valuable stones and jewels. When there is no such living being to take charge of the post of Brahma, the Lord himself becomes a Brahma and takes the post. Mm-hmm. And also it's, it's said that um, in order for Jiva to become Brahma, he could perform his Varnashan duties perfectly for a hundred lifetimes. Then he gets the piety to become Brahma. And then uh, it's also said in some places in Shastra that at the time of universal creation, Brahma, uh, like the residents of that of that planetary system, they go to the bike with the planets. Right. At the end of it, yeah. at the end, at the time of annihilation, right. the, the Brahma and right. all those living entities, all of them, there is, it's expected that all of them would have attained purification. <coughs> those who didn't, obviously, were not Brahma, all the rest of them, all of them, mm. go with Brahma. So the demigods go as well? Not the, the demigods, demigods okay. the residents of Satyaloka. Oh, Satyaloka, really? Yeah. Wow. That's why they're on in Shiman Bhagavad. Uh, Jana Loka, Tapa Loka. Ma- 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 Loka. Mahar, Mahar, Jana, Tapa, and Sattva. Wow, I These didn't know that. planetary systems. Mm. Wow. So they're, they're like pure devotees? Then the almost, almost. Oh, okay. It's actually said in the Bihar Bhagavatam that uh, the, <coughs> these planetary, in, these, uh, in these planetary systems, and uh, one of them, you know, uh, Gopal Kumar meets the, one of the sages and he says, you know, you're trying to like, See the Lord and power, like you know, perceive the Lord through your senses, but hide the senses, perceiving through the mind. You teach him how to do that. Then he gets like a higher taste of ecstasy and goes to the next planetary system. And there, like they're performing yagyas, and Vishnu himself personally comes and I accepts the offering and takes it off, uh, accepts the offering and gives it eminence. And they eat the eminence and they like they themselves get ecstatic and they, they do it again. Wow. So like there's different levels of purity. Right. And you know, the <coughs> levels of reciprocation and different planetary systems for Vishnu. Wow. But the highest reciprocations go like Kerbyo, Dhanam, Dhanam, Dhanam. Where did you read the passage? Yeah, something is yeah. in the same. Is it the same? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Prabhu, it was uh, always confusing for me. How is Shiva coming from Brahma? If, mm-hmm. Because Shiva is like Shiva thought, or right. is much. Greater than Shiva Tattva. Yeah. So, but, but he's kind of coming from Brahma yeah. with Shiva Tattva, so how is it? So, so he's coming from Brahma? Yes. It's, yeah. It's, uh, so, yeah, like I explained how, you know, he, he emanated from the two eyebrows of Brahma. So, when Brahma was angry with his four sons, you know, that anger became manifested as Shiva. Prabhu's question is, you know, sometimes Shasta says, uh, you know, Vishnu from Vishnu, Shiva comes. Right. And sometimes Shasta says, from Brahma, Brahma Shiva, Shiva comes. So what's, what's the Shiva Tata? Right. I think he's asking that. Yeah, yeah. no. I'm he's not asking, asking. Uh, Because it describes, like, difference, like, uh, because between Shiva Tattva, Jiva Tattva, and Vishnu Tattva, and Shiva Tattva is bigger, than, higher than Jiva Tattva. It has more, because Shiva has more qualities of Vishnu than. Yeah. And Jiva, including Brahma. Hmm. So, 
how can Shiva who has much greater qualities than Brahma come from Brahma? Wow. I think I would have to let Vishnu Chitipravur answer that one. Yeah, this is, if Krishna can appear from the womb of Devaki, uh, you know, and then Shiva can suddenly appear. <coughs> And also you see what I is coming out of the nostril of Brahma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. There's more about Shiva Tattva is that yeah. uh, Brahma generated Rudra. Right. But, but he gave so ten... So there's different. Shiva is different. Rudra. So there are twelve Rudras. Of yeah. the twelve, sorry, eleven Rudras. And eleven Rudras, some of them are Jivas. Sometimes even all of them are actually Jivas. Mm. Yeah. The jivas who have occupied the position of of of, mm. of a rudra has been empowered. Mm. So the original potency of Lord Shiva acts through them, mm. and there is also the original Lord Shiva, so who appears in this material world also. So original Lord Shiva is so he's still the same rudra as from yes, the thing, yes, from the eyebrows, yes, because like I was reading how. You know the ten. He gives ten names, right, to to Rudra, and one of them is Shiva, and Swambhu, and yeah. So as I said, you know, there are eleven Rudras. Yeah. So, and then there's uh, it's complex. Shiva Tattva is complex because Lord Shiva is actually he's, he's he he appears even before Lord Brahma in the cycle of creation. He appears along with Karma <coughs> and outside the material universes. Um, so. Yeah, this is more elaborately explained. Yeah. But yes, you see, they appear just like Vishnu appears again as Shiva the Kasai Vishnu, as the Gunavatars. So Lord Shiva also appears like this. Again, Shankarsha, he generates Shiva also. Yeah. <coughs> Shankara is, is, is Shankara, the <coughs> comes from Shankarsha. <coughs> Who, who is the source, it's also stated in the Bhagavatam that Shankarsha is the source of, of Shiva. Mm. So, wow. yeah, it's, it's not exactly uh, a, a linear model of creation. Yeah. Linear means one after the other. Yeah, right. So it's, like it's, it's, it's in many ways simultaneous uh, creations happening. Yeah. All at the same time, yeah. and uh, and and in different and the same thing happening in different ways. Yeah, it's complex. Yeah, and I mean I've read some of it, and I'm like, okay, hang on, where, what, when? It's like, have you read? Shankarshan yeah. is the so source of Lord Shiva. It, it says so. This Sada Shiva, who is in the spiritual world, who is just like you know, right. I also bookmark that was for the Pachiri and Shantanu. No, sorry, Shiva Mitra Devi Karvishi Yoga. That like you know, that just like the difference between milk and yogurt. You know, <coughs> so like it said that in the, like Sadashiva is right at the point when the milk is about to become yogurt. Mm. Know, if the analogy is given like that, and then as it degrades further and further down, mm. the milk become more of a yogurt, and you see different manifestations of Shiva coming down. Right. So Sadashiva is more or less like Vishnu Tattva, but then like Shambhu, you know, is like you know, starting to become Shiva Tattva. Then, like as as it degrades down further and further, then this it even comes out of the to the <coughs> level where there's eleven rudras who are all living entities, are all jivas. And the Madhurya Kadamani says that even a jiva can become rudra if he really so badly desires it. Mm. They can become rudra for one whole mahakalpa. Yeah. Who can become a jiva? A living entity can become a rudra. But so I guess ultimately like uh, ultimate shiva that is he's coming from Vishnu. And that's otherwise mm. Acharya. Shambhu and Prakriti, you know, 
So you usually get, you can understand it like this: that to the degree that Shiva uh, come uh, you know associates with the material energy, to that degree like yes. this, right. just in the standard, <coughs> the highest standard is Sada Shiva, and no Shiva can be with Shiva. Right, right. Okay. What does Shambhu mean? Does Shambhu is the uh, glands of Mahavishnu and the it's the eleventh uh, verse of the fifth chapter. The aggregate of the of all the living entities. The aggregate form of all the living entities. When Mahavishnu glances on the on the on the material universes, they are impregnated with the living souls. But mm. that glance itself, that 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 effulgence of that glance, which consists of all the living entities, that effulgence is is, is Shambhu. Therefore, Lord Shiva is Jyoti Linga. Mm. He's Jyoti, Jyoti Linga, right. because he's Jyoti, and Linga, because he's the aggregate semen that is generated from 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 Mahavishnu's glass, which is which consists of all the living entities. Right. And uh, Garba, Garba, Prakriti is Garba, is the womb, which is impregnated. So Shiva and Parvati create the universe. Right. They, they are the creators of the material world. Wow. Actually, I've never heard that. I haven't read that yet. So therefore, when the Tamasic Puranas say that Shiva and Parvati created the universe, they're true. Wow. But yeah. it's in one sense. From only one, one, one level. Yeah. Right. You go a little higher, then you see Vishnu and Lakshmi in the other. Then you go a little bit higher, you see Govinda. <laughs> <laughs> no, much higher. Not one level. Maybe. <laughs> this uh, Richard Dawkins published a video of which is called uh, the beauty of science. So in that in that in that, uh, in that ugly video, he starts with this. Science has given, given people so many things. It has given people very efficient means of transportation. Has made their lives comfortable. Has made has has, has made several advances in medicine. And improve the quality of lives of people, blah 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 blah. And then he presents this atheistic theory of uh, how is Big Bang and blah blah blah. Um, the universe is not created by a person. It's not created, you know, and things like that. So I will, uh, you know, referring to that point that you know, just because they created a car or an air conditioner, yeah, doesn't, doesn't mean they, they can comment on the creation of the universe. universe. But right. that's how the scientists think. Yeah, Richard Dawkins is one of the famous. Well, first of all, uh, it's nonsense what he's saying. That the quality of life is better than the <laughs> So, you know, there are more diseases now, more, more, more suicides. Less fresh air, less fresh Less fresh, less fresh. <laughs> and, uh, But then again, because, because they have done some, some sort Small of thing yeah. in the form of these machines and in, instruments, uh, people are amazed. The truth is that actually these sort of uh, mystic inventions existed in much yeah. more efficient ways in, yeah. in, in yeah. the past. If we, if we read the Vedic texts, mm. the Mahabharata, and all we understand, mm. it's stated in the Ramayana that uh, Bharata and Shatrugna came from. What is that? Uh, what's it? Kaikei. So Kaikei is the kingdom is. Mithila. Mithila? Mithila. Mithila is Mithila is Sita is Jara. But uh, this is um, Kanaka. Anyway, anyway it's, it's Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> That's where Kaike is from. Yeah. Her father is Afghanistan. It's, it's, there's, there's a term, Sanskrit, which is which is still used. That's why I'm standing up. Anyway, they came from there with with horses that traveled so fast that they came there from there within like three, three four days, days, three days, mm. three days from Afghanistan to New Delhi in three days. Mm. Ayodhya. Oh, Ayodhya, yes, sorry, Ayodhya in three days, and uh, it stated that Krishna traveled from Dwaraka to it was it Krishna or Balaram when uh, when who was kidnapped? No, no, no. The son of the son of Anirudha. 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 Come on, it's Pajumna. What is it? Pajumna. Who was who was captured by the Pajumna by the Kauravas? Kaurav. 
Given description. So, but, but it's explained. It's in the Krishna book. Swift horses. Mm. Horses that are very speed swift, speed. very swift. Mm. So this technology was there before, and it was more subtle. <coughs> and by riding those horses, you don't fall sick. You know, mm. you don't get you don't get <laughs> all these things. They also had like those nuclear <coughs> nuclear weapons. You know, like the no. mantras, Brahmastra, like how Arjuna initiates some Brahmastra. Yeah, right, right. And, you know, all this, how much effort they're putting in to make these nowadays, you know, compared to like just one mantra from our, you know, yeah. from the Shatriyas. People are still stuck with the, planes. Right. The planes, you know. So people are, so people are still stuck with, those who are, those who are impious, they are attracted by the, uh, uh, what we can call as the uh, okay. mystic, mystical, um, manifestations of scientists where they mm. generate so many instruments and yeah. devices and they're bewildered by that. And pious people are are, are bewildered by, by 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 all these uh, bogus babas and gods mm. who give them and fulfill their material desires. And mm. in this way, either yeah. sides of the coin, they miss that Krishna is the supreme personality of God. Yeah. It's the same thing. As long as I, my material desires are satisfied, Whoever can satisfy the material desires, he is God, and whatever he says is true. Yeah. So the scientists are God for a set of people. Right. And their religion is your religion. Yeah. Whereas the pious people, they have their religion where the Babas and the Appas and the Yamas and all these people, they, they, they go to the way and not the way. And ultimately, everyone is turned away from Krishna. Krishna. Hmm. Sure. Yeah, that was the that was your co- <laughs> That was your that was the comment that you wanted to make. It's actually the bigger idol they have. Stuck with that every day and for worshiping for how many hours a day? The the big I took care of the T V monitor when I went to buy this monitor and I had this eighty three in 90, 93 inch TV screen. Huge! <laughs> so huge! And they have these videos, but purposefully the videos are like someone is skateboarding, or, or is like, no, what is that? He's, he's uh, surfing. surfing. Yeah, he's surfing. <laughs> and then the wave like kind of just splashes on the screen. It's like about to, like, you know, come on, you. It's just so huge. And you're like, you just stand in front of them, you forget the whole world. And you, yeah, they you wouldn't. Know, glue to that yeah. television. Nowadays they have what's called VR. I don't know if you've Yo, seen it. You know, that's like the next level. That's like real get out of reality stuff, you know. They're trying to get out of reality. So they put on this headset and you're in, all of a sudden you're in actually a different world. You feel like, like, I, you know, I went on one, of, I put on one of those and you get on a Santa thingy and it takes air and you look down and you actually feel like your body's like, oh my gosh, I'm in air. And you feel like you're there and you look around and it's the same as seeing your normal. So they're doing so. M- it really is. Ins- it's like it's like it's like. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And I wrote. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote it's it's really crazy, you know. Now and and the things they're doing with that is like really nonsensical, you know. The the things that they're coming coming up with that now, the things that they can do with it, especially for the young generation, it's really horrible. So it's like really really bewildering. When people are pious. Same desire. I want to fly. I want to be lighter than the lightest. I want to be heavier than the heaviest. I want to, you know. And uh, they achieve that by by doing mystical, you know, performances, performances of mystical tapasya, tapasya and, and by trying the Ashtanga Yoga process, they obtain mystic city. Yeah. And it's pious because it elevates them. It actually elevates them. But the impious people, they also have the same desires, but they they are very impious. Mm. So then these demons invent these kind of things and yeah. uh, and they fulfill them. And that's what happens actually in the lower planetary systems. Mm-hmm. Lower planetary systems, therefore, in some ways, they say they enjoy more much than more than the heavenly planetary systems. Same thing. Huh? They have much higher technology. 
and uh, yeah, <coughs> it's like sometimes these people, you know, these 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 appearances of some sometimes extraterrestrial people. Most of the time, they're actually demons from the lower planet races. Yes. Mm -hmm. The demigods they won't even come here. They, they, mm -hmm. It's so horrible. <laughs> they, they have no business to come here. They hate this place like anything. You know? But the demons they sometimes come and peep up and they try to show their power. They have a little fun and they can go back. You know? <laughs> That's a weird movie. Thank you. Jai Shriman Bhagavatam ki, Jai Shri Prabhupada ki. Jai Shri Prabhupada ki.